Hello and welcome to the intro to FSM templates, input variables, and output variables. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make a simple FSM template and how we can use the input and output options for our variables. Okay, so we have a simple scene here with this NPC. This is just a player capsule collider so I can move around in the scene. But if I go to the mesh game object of this NPC, add an FSM, and do a set material color action. We'll say we change them to yellow. Just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna add a few more bells and whistles to this. So let's say it waits uh, one second and then goes off to the next date where we have another set material color, except this time it's gonna be changing to blue, and then another weight that will send back. Okay, so every second it should go back and forth. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Great. If I took this NPC and duplicated it, and I have these three NPCs here, they all have that FSM on them, but if I changed one, to go from pink to white, hit play. Only the one that I made that change to will have that effect. Okay, but if I wanted to templatize this, what I could do is come here to the FSM, right click, save template, and I'll call this our pink to white template, use save template in this FSM, yes. Okay, so now it says we're using this template. You can see down here it says click to edit template, so if I click in here, now I can look inside of this. And if you come over to the component over here, you can see that we're also using a template in here. Now if I go to the other NPCs, they still have their FSMs on it. But now I can hit this little dot dot dot, and select my pink to white template. I'll do that for this other one as well. Okay, now when I hit play, they all do the same thing. And what's cool about this is that now I could just go into one of them and say, for example, oh, I wanted this wait to happen half a second instead, and this one also half a second. So now they'll be blinking much faster. Hit play. Okay, now all of them get that effect because they're all referencing a template. I make that change to the template in one place and that change shows up in all of the templates wherever it is. In that way, it's kind of like a prefab. But what's cool about this is that you can make some adjustments per template, specifically with the variables. So if I come over here to edit my template, say in this first state, instead of selecting this pink color, I could change this to a variable. I'll say, first color, and in the second one, I can call this second color. And then in the variables tab, if I select these variables, we have these two options down here, input and output. So I'm gonna select this input value. With that checked, it gets put in this little category down here under inputs, and I'll do the same thing with second color. So now they're both considered input variables. Well, what does that mean? That means that they're gonna show up over here in the component. So now we have this input section here where you could select the specific color that you want it to change to. So right now I'm on this NPC2's template and I'll say I wanna change between green and white. Okay, but if I go to NPC1's, it's at the default value. So I could change this one from pink to black. And then on this other NPC, I could change it from blue to red. Okay, so they're all using the same template, but I've given them all different variables within that template. If I hit play, they all do their own color. 
And what's cool about this is that now that they have their own individual properties with that template, I can still make changes to the overall design of that template. So if I come in here to edit it, and I go to that first date, and I say, let's wait two seconds. So it'll be in this first color for two seconds, and then in the second color for only half a second. Now when I hit play, all of them still get that uniform update, but they also have their own individual variables their colors. Now there's this other way you could use FSM templates. It's very powerful. Um, what I'll do is hop into the template and this first color here in the variables tab, I'm going to make it an output as well. And I may as well actually make this second color an output as well. Okay, now you can see it reflected up here. There's not much difference here anymore, but what I could do is say create a 3D object, we'll just make a little cube over here. Okay, and I'm gonna add an FSM to this cube. And we're gonna add an action called run FSM. And I'm gonna select our template over here. It's called pink to white, even though it no longer uses pink to white, but bear with me. So what's interesting is that, so this action run FSM will do everything that this pink to white template does. And we can use this inputs to give it certain values. So we could say that its first color is yellow and its second color is orange and hit play. So now if I hit this show button, we could show the template that this cube is running and we could see it running this process on itself. It goes between orange and yellow. We could stop this. And let's edit our template to random color. So we're going to select a random color. Okay, I'm going to delete these set material colors now. Okay, delete that as well. And we're going to select between green, red, and blue. So it'll select a random color and then it'll store it in this first color. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and put it in the second state. And this time it'll be saving it as the second color. And just so we can see a little bit of difference here, I'm going to change these to slightly brighter versions of all of those colors. All right, so selects a random color. That's all it does. It's not setting any colors. Right, so if I press play now, nothing's happening. If you go inside the template though, you can see it is selecting these random colors. Down here is the random color it's getting. Green, red, bright blue, green, right? So that's what this template is doing on this cube and all these NPCs for that matter. But now that we're using this run FSM, Initially, it uses these inputs. It gets set as this yellow and orange, but the programming inside of this FSM is overriding that. So this is just kind of like setting these default values, but then when it uses those select random colors, those values are changing. That's where, the, that's where outputs comes in. So we could store their current values here from outputs. So I'll call this one first color and the second one second color. Okay, now when I hit play, you'll see that it's getting the colors from inside this FSM. The FSM that it's running right now is spitting out these values. This red, bright blue, blue, bright green. And these will just keep changing. You'll see that they're updating in real time. So I could make use of this by using the uh, set material color now. Right, I'll have this running every frame, and the color will have it setting. Let's just set it as the uh, first color. So if I press play, we've essentially turned this FSM template, if I show it really quick, these two states, right? That's made up of two and four actions. Two states, four actions, have now been compressed into one single action that we could squeeze here into this state. 
So it's a whole process. It's like it's kind of like making a custom action. This is the heavy duty power of FSM templates. Okay, and you'll see down here that we have a finished event as well. So the way you could use that is by hopping into the template. And let's just say that every time we get to this second state, we do an int add. We'll call this number of loops. We do one. And then you do an int compare. Comparing our number of loops to three. And once it's equal, we'll send off this complete. And down here in this state, we'll throw in a finish FSM action. And it says here, stop this FSM. If this FSM was launched by a run FSM action, it will trigger a finish event in that state. So once we reach here, back up here in the run FSM action, it'll fire off this finish event. So this one we could say also, uh, let's just say this one is next. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play. And after we get some number of loops, it finishes. This is something that will do a lot of heavy lifting for you. So that is our introduction to FSM templates and input and output variables. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.